apologies to anybody who uh, saw my stage at the map talk, because this is basically the same thing, but it's a slightly extended version. And it's not really a talk, it's more of a demonstration. Anyway, GPS traces. I remember those. So those of you who've been uh, doing Open Street Map for a long time will remember this. Um, GPS traces used to be our sort of bread and butter. We used to do everything by GPS trace. There was a great big prominent upload to a GPS trace button. And everything was sort of GPS oriented because it was basically all we had. We didn't have big imagery, we had a little bit of Yahoo imagery. Basically everything was pieced together through both cycle rides and dictaphones and then sort of patching together all these um, uh, GPS traces. Uh, when I first started getting involved in OpenStreetMap, uh, I, I, I was actually under the impression that it had sort of been missold to me. I thought that you could just go for drives and collect these GPS traces and upload them and it would magically figure out where you'd been and it would make a map from it. And I thought, wow, that's really cool. I like all my GPS traces. And I was a bit disappointed when I found out that you actually just sort of just used them and just drew the map using it in a sort of painstaking process. But I got hooked anyway. So, um, but I, I was... I was kind of disappointed that we didn't have that sort of stuff. Eight years later, GPS traces are becoming slightly outdated and the GPS trace feature has slightly disappeared from the front page and uh, we're all starting to use GP uh, uh, aerial imagery for everything, I'm talking about other data sources. And I've always been a bit disappointed about that because there is actually a huge amount of data in a GPS trace that we're not really using. It tells us some very, very useful things. Um, and all we've ever really done with them is just kind of plot them on a map and say, well, you can trace over it if you really like. Whereas, in reality, each GPS point has a timestamp and each, um, uh, and you can use that to tell us about a journey. So when you go for a journey, taking a GPS trace, essentially you are creating a unit of truth about your journey. You are saying, this journey must be possible. And when it comes to routing in the map, you can use that to find out a lot of things about the map. For instance, you know, whether it's possible to get from this road to that road, well it must be because this trace has managed to do that. So essentially, so I was disappointed with the whole situation and what I eventually did was I just started writing one myself. And I'm just going to, uh, um, just show you it. I hope I've got the right connection. I called it um, That shouldn't be possible because its job its job I didn't call it so I'm not found. <laughs> Its job is basically to take a trace, look at it, and go, that shouldn't be possible. Um, and what it does is, uh, you, okay, so here's, here's the example, and you basically take a, sorry, I, I didn't have a network connection for this, so I wasn't able to actually prepare all my, all my pages, so you basically take one of your traces from um, your, cheap, your, your trace history, and you, uh, at the moment, you have to see what its um, what its uh, trace ID is, and stick it in there, and hit calculate. Um, in the future, I'll make that more easy. But this is kind of a prototype. Um, it's one five one two zero nine two. One five one two zero nine two. No, we don't. Have. We should really have for that. So one five one two, okay. Zero nine two, right. That should be equivalent. It does take a while to do the processing. Uh, and this is the. Oh, those just turn. Oh no, it's very faint. Sorry. Uh, on on a normal screen, it's less it's less faint. Uh, so essentially, you get given. This, these are all your traces that you've uh, got down the side here, and the plots show to what extent that trace shouldn't be possible. So the, the big red spikes are the bits where there are problems. 
uh, and it gives you back this trace. So here's track zero, which goes from London all the way to Glasgow. And it loads slowly over the network because you don't have a fast connection. Come on. It, it is quite a big trace. I should have clicked on that. There you go. And so, uh, still hasn't loaded the bottom bar. Come on. Okay, let's, let's load a smaller trace. That one's a bit smaller. But, uh, essentially, the way it works is it uses the um, timestamps on each GPS point. And says and use and compares it against the OpenStreetMap routing network and says should according to OpenStreetMap should you be able to get from here to here in this amount of time? Right. Oh, it is there. I can't see the bottom of the screen on my laptop, so <laughs> I was wondering why it's not loaded. Okay, right. So we can um, we can select a point which is a bit of actually no, let's select, let's select a peak, and uh, it's got this sort of nice busy widget here, which uh, is a bit slow. So I'm going to turn that network. Come on. Um, so, uh, let's zoom to that point. Do you think about this slide? There's something a bit strange going on. Why are there two charts? Well, the, that's actually a fully zoomed out view, so you can zoom into, you can zoom into this chart. Uh, and there's like one the whole track. Yes, but... Um, it's been really incredibly slow today for some reason. There you go. Um, so this is a point that when the, when the, oh, the tiles have loaded, but they're so faint that you can't see them. Uh, this is actually where uh, the driver has come off the road and has gone around a service station, and it's going on various roads, little roads in the service station that aren't actually mapped. So that is potentially something that we need to fix. The idea is to use these GPS traces to find points in the map which don't quite agree with reality. So uh, previously, if you took, for instance, a massive GPS trace that went from Land's End to John Groves, uh, it may have all kinds of interesting information in it, but 99% of it might be fairly boring for a street map because we've got all of those roads. And so your, job, your task might be without a uh, clever tool, it might be to go through the entire trace and go, yeah, we've got that, yeah, we've got that, yeah, we've got that. Whereas the idea is with this, is you just throw it into the tool and it compares it against the reachability of the network and says, that's kind of fine, except for this area, this area, and this area. And then that might be like, you might have a tiny missing road in, in one area, you might have gone the wrong way down what it thinks is a one-way street in one area which probably means that we've got the wrong one-way street, the wrong way round, or it isn't a wrong one-way street at all, or you've turned left where you shouldn't be allowed to turn left, or, you know, could be a lot of things. But basically the idea is comparing the routable open street map data with a known possible route. You can also use this for various other types of QA, like if you, if you know that a particular, if you know that a particular particular route should still be possible, you could run it every week, for instance, and check that nobody's, you know, uh, screwed up uh, any of the routing on that particular road, because occasionally little tiny roads get deleted by well-meaning people, but, um, and otherwise there will be no way of knowing that that actually looks okay, but there's a tiny section of the road missing, you actually can't do that. Um, um, snow gates. Hmm? People add snow gates to roads. Yes. And then the routing engines can't route. Well, that's an interesting one because um, so one of my demo uh, 
traces uh, now can't get off the Isle of Dogs because um, somebody's put, um, you know, the Isle of Dogs to the east has uh, a raising bridge and it has the barriers for the raising bridge. And uh, now, and by default, those aren't routable across because they're barriers. Uh, now, you could argue that I should make it just ignore them and go, well, you can sometimes go across them, that's fine. But I'm trying to use the, to do the routing, this uses, this, this uses a, a program called OSRM, which is one of the most popular uh, OpenStreetMap routers. And I'm trying to use vanilla rules. I'm trying to use rules as close to the actual OSRM as possible. So the idea is, if OSRM couldn't give you a route that says you should go this way, if it's unable to find that sort of route, maybe it should, you know, maybe there's something wrong because you're basically taking a route that it wouldn't advise you to take. And so possibly that means OSRM should be more liberal in rules it's enforcing or, you know, I'm trying to not be political. I'm trying to be any apolitical about that and just show what OSRM would and wouldn't say about this. Um, uh, the demo is not working too well, I'm afraid. Um, but it's currently running for. Um, oh, that's it. There we go. Um, it's also quite bright. You can't see that it's actually darkened out the bottom there. And you know, anyway. Um, it's only running for the, for the British Isles at the moment because it needs quite a lot of horsepower to import the data every night. And I recently tried to expand it to Benelux as well, but that made um, one of our servers, dev.openstreetmap.org, uh, it didn't quite melt, but it, um, it wasn't happy. And so I, I rolled it back to British Isles at the moment, but I will expand it if I get more processing power so that you will essentially be able to throw any trace into it and it will say no, that's fine or that has a problem here or that has a problem here. I do want to expand, I do want to improve this view so that uh, it is more intelligent and it maybe pops up little yellow notes that say instead of just sort of having this vague sort of red sort of there might be a problem here thing, it would actually sort of have a a little yellow note that says, did you go the wrong way up one way street here? Or were you speeding here? Or that sort of thing. Um, there are all kinds of things I want to improve about it. But it basically works, which is um, quite surprising because I kind of just started designing the algorithm from scratch in a kind of bizarre ad hoc way. And uh, it works fairly well. And you're all invited to and you'll put your traces up on it. Um, I suppose the best thing would be for me to just take questions now because I could talk aimlessly. I'm afraid that oh, we don't have very much time for questions. Oh, We're just about to have lunch, but uh, Gregory's just going to do a quick, uh, a very quick talk here and then we're going to uh, grab some lunch. Next time. Why is that setting up? Let's just ask the double question. Just basically kick the successive rules and then check into the Yes, basically. Uh, for each for each um Ah, oh, there it is. For each um GPS point, a pair of GPS points it says, can I get from here to here? And can I get from here to here? But of course more complicated. Where the rules are no, it actually puts it into OSRM. It yeah, says. Yes. It isn't. OSRM is ridiculously fast. It is scary fast. And I can make it. Not, I, I can make the whole process of doing it faster. And also, it's very parallel. Because a lot of the um, little tiny queries can be done in parallel. Quite a bit, like just looking for successive routes on a week. There are various, yes. Just not putting. Yep, there, there, are optimi well, there, are, there are various optimizations and heuristics in. But basically, that's the core of the algorithm. But on top of that, um, 
there are there are a million there are a lot of heuristics that sort of are little cheats to try and speed up the there are, it does hinting where it um it does think of, you ready yet? It does think of hinting where it sort of tries to take if it can't quite root around a little bit, it roots around a longer bit and checks all the way IDs of the thing going around it. So those heuristics are like in the side of the They're my heuristics, they're sort of ways of basically all my algorithm is is a way of choosing what questions to ask OSRM. And all the heuristics are ways of finding things out with whilst having to ask OSRM fewer questions. So I can go like well I, Yeah. Okay. Very 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 quick, very simple question. Can you tell how you're traveling? Yes. Um, but, but 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 bicycle mode doesn't work very well yet. Mo motor car is the only mode that I would say works well. Um, that's partly because OSRM's bicycle mode is not very polished at the moment. It's got all kinds of things in it that are um, that are sort of specific to left hand uh, right hand drive countries. So this one is a lot of that yep. flexibility would become really quite important. Yes. Walking. I'm personally a cyclist so I quite like that. But okay. When, for instance, if you if you know a, a taxi driver or a trucker that you can just put the uh, uh, GPS tracker on and get um, 100,000 points back a month later, then those those well, this is where it's going to be useful because you'll just be able to go rather than going through the entire 10,000 point tracker.